Ladies and Gentlemen, Athletes, sport fans, adventurers and dreamers, again a big warm and loving welcome from my side. I am totally excited and stoked to present episode one of the podcast Cycling Athens Why Not. My name is, has always been and will always be Bernie Schuster and I would like to talk about my road cycling adventure from Austria to Greece from Vienna to Athens. As I mentioned, this is the first session of this podcast, so beside the intro, you haven't really missed anything, so you are at the right spot and in the right time, so everything is perfect. A quick recap for those who haven't heard the intro, in 2021, I've been cycling from Austria to Athens in 14 days, covering more than 2,000 kilometers, climbing more than 21,000 meters altitude, yeah, it's a lot, and crossed in total seven countries. And this is what I would like to talk about. Three things you can expect from every episode of this podcast, and I'm planning to have 14 episodes at least, one for each day on the bike, and maybe some extra podcast sessions and episodes at the end. Three things, as I said, you can expect. Number one, I'll always start with two data. So facts and figures of the daily ride, such as kilometers, moving speed, total ascent, etc. So you know exactly what I did, what I performed uh, on this very day. Number two, the tour journal. This is a personal share out of what actually happened this very day, where I started, to where I went, what happened on the way, thoughts, impressions, feelings, things that just happened. And thirdly, I will talk about the topic of the day, or the main topic, and this is the part of the podcast where I would like to discuss interesting topics and important facts around road bikes, the road bike equipment, safety, nutrition for example, cycling strategy on such a long multi-day trip, what mental strength means to me and why it is important, how did I navigate, how did I do, a, did I do the tour planning, what about motivations, flat tires, etc. So one interesting topic. And this is what you can expect from every podcast, from every single episode. Again, welcome. Are you ready for a cycling adventure? Are you ready to join me on my adventure from Austria to Athens? Then buckle up and get ready to rumble. This whole craziness started in September. It was the 1st of September. It was a Wednesday. And I called episode 1, day 1. It has begun. Hell yeah. As promised, let's look at the tour data of the day. Everything was recorded with a Garmin Forerunner 235, 235 and the data I present right now are derived from the Garmin Connect app and as I mentioned already, each GPX file will be available afterwards. If you guys are keen, just tell me it via email, cyclingathens at gmail.com, send me an email. I did not get any sponsorship or any support from Garmin at all. So I just mentioned it because I used it, I owned it, and it works super well for me. So where did we start? Kleinböchern in Austria. I thought this is just a wonderful starting place for this trip. I ended up in Graz in Austria, almost very south of Austria, in the beautiful Steiermark. It's actually a straight line almost down from the starting point of Kleinböchern. In the end, I cycled a total distance of 211 kilometers with a total ascent of 2,270 meters. So there was a bit of climbing, a couple of, a couple of passes I need to overcome. In the end, it were three passes. I had an average speed in the end of 25.2 kilometers per hour and I spent wonderful and relaxing <laughs> quote unquote, eight hours and 21 minutes on the bike. 
In total, I burned, according to Garmin, 4,900 kilocalories. This have been the two data what was achieved on this very day. And now I want to talk about the tour journal. So I give you a personal description. First day of the journey, it has begun. How great was that feeling? You need to think about after months of planning and preparation, you get up in the morning, five o'clock, the alarm went off, you do breakfast, get your clothes on, you get down to your bike, push the bike out of the garage, you start the day with the plan in the end to cycle to Athens. What a feeling. I can just recommend such a trip to all of you guys. The first four days I knew would become my performance challenge. Long, high and fast. Why is that? I had four days to go to Croatia, roughly 780 kilometers, simple math, almost 200 kilometers per day. That's a lot. Funny fact, when I was starting from my parents' place, basically, this is where, this was my headquarter for the preparation, since I can just plan and prepare and store the bike there very well. I was standing outside, my dad made a picture, sent me, sent me good vibes, and an old friend of mine was passing by, he was talking to me and he was saying, hey Bernie, how are you doing? Long time no see. And I said, yes, Hartl, it's true. Hey, where are you going? And I said, Hartl, I'm cycling now to Athens. He was very puzzled and I'm not sure if he believed me, but hey, this was the plan. Klein Pöcklern, starting point, then Kapfenberg, I don't know, maybe this city sounds familiar to, to those of you who are familiar with Austria, and then Graz. The first 70 kilometers was easy in terms of navigation only. It has been basically the neighborhood. It's Richtung Gössling. It's in the direction of Gössling. This is actually a wonderful pre-Alp area, for Alpen Bereich. Mariazell is one of the cities where I was planning to pass by. It's a famous pilgrim city. Pope has been there, um, so people might know it. It's wonderfully hilly, green, woods everywhere, really getting remoter and remoter because you're moving away from the, from the urban area. I had slight difficulties at the beginning, and this is already an interesting tip, maybe if you, if you face such a challenge. So I was going the right way, everything was well, everything was fine. And there was a road construction. That means there was no asphalt on the roads. So turning around and going a different route was in this case not a real option. Um, so I knew that the construction is only a couple of hundred meters. So I basically pushed the bike. And I can really recommend this. I am a bit heavier. I have 28 millimeter wide wheels. So I have been preparing for a bit more sturdy tires to be prone to punctures but I shifted the bike because my my plan was a zero um, flat tire policy that means Bernie no risk my experience is not so good with flat tires so sometimes one flat tire leads to another flat tire because when you change the inner tube you punch it with the changing tools you get dirt in it it's a mess I just wanted to avoid that. So I pushed the bike and here's the first tip. Tip, after the, the off-road part, clean with something, your front and your real wheel, because sometimes like little stones or sharp things are stuck in the rubber. If you clean that, you are good to go. It just takes a minute, 30 seconds, but it might help you to protect the wheel and keeps you going. And that's what I wanted. My Ortlip saddlebag fixation was great but at the beginning I learned that I have packed a bit too loose so here's the second tip if you use the saddlebag that goes straight out of your of your saddle behind like a little or bigger sausage you really need to pack it tight and squeeze and roll it up as tight as possible and then close it guess again as tight as possible because there is otherwise movement and this movement means a couple of centimeters left right 
is always a bit of a swinging mess, can't be avoided when you get kicking into the pedals, but the tighter you pack, the better it is. It works, and it really worked well in the end. I had three nice climbs in front of me, three passes. The first pass was 704 meters. The second one was very nice, 1,127. And the last one, 1,254. So it was nicely building up. Weather, I can tell you guys, was just perfect. It was a bit cloudy, medium temperature, 20 degrees roughly, everything perfect. At the beginning of such a trip, everyone is a bit nervous in terms of outfit, bike, equipment. Everything seems to, seems to work fine. No flat tire, no problems with navigation, phone, battery, the setup, everything was really, really nice. Here, just a side note, don't worry. With the next episode, I really spent the last main topic only talking about equipment and the bike, and we can go into the, into the details here. At the very end, after 180 kilometers at the Murradweg, I really had some issues with my butt. It really hurt. There was a bit of a, a problem is too much. It was just uncomfortable. And that's it. I cycled into Graz. And this was really, I mean, all of you who are cycle, you know, 211 kilometers are 211 kilometers. Eight hours, 21 on the bike is, it's not a walk in the park. For those who maybe not cycle or don't have this kind of idea, it's eight hours on the bike is, is just a bit. So you see this the city sign of Graz and this is really a relief. It's really a good emotion that builds up in your body because it's achievement. I mean, it's cycle from place A to place B, eight hours where usually you go by car and usually it's a big trip. You can make it with your body, a healthy body, a bit of motivation, good food on the way, some granola bars, and you, you can do that. The bed and breakfast place was nice. I could bring my bike to the room. This was important for me. And actually on this day, I was so happy, had a smooth, easy start. Maybe here we are can closing this with this tip of when you start a longer trip, don't have too much expectations on the very first day. Keep it easy. It's step by step. There is, there is always challenges to come. Appreciate as well. If you have a good day where nothing crazy happens, that's as well fine. And that's nothing that you should take for granted. Yeah, Bernie was in Graz. First day, tick. What do you do when you arrive? Be proud of yourself. Get a hot shower in. Charge all your devices because it's paramount that navigation is on, your Garmin Connect is on, so you know where to go and you know how you are performing. I was then finding a good place for a nice dinner, was booking my next bed and breakfast for Zagreb. This was the tour for the next day. I checked it out on this very day and this very evening. I felt confident that this works. Did a bit of stretching. I want to say as well, this is a very important part. Take time every evening for your body, for maintenance. If something is tweaking, something is hurting, take care of it. That's it. Be proud of yourself. Tell your friends that everything is fine, that you're good. Check, check out your bike if everything is in order. And then try to get early to bed to get a good night's sleep because tomorrow the journey continues. This was the first tour journey and I hope it was interesting. I hope you could kind of imagine what happened on this very day. At the very first day in Austria, there were not too much craziness and challenging topics on the show notes, but I promise you, it's getting crazier and crazier. Now we're moving to the main topic of today, as promised. And from my perspective, the most important topic, the why. Why? Did I decide to cycle to Athens? Why should someone do a long road cycling trip? It's not so easy. It's not, it's not done with saying, yeah, because it's just cool. It's just great. It's just awesome. No, I challenged myself to think about what really motivates me to do such adventures, such trips. And this is what I want to share with you. The why question is at the beginning an important one because it's the make or break decision. So what motivated me to do so? I think, point one, 
my character, my personality. I intrinsically love sport. I intrinsically love adventures. I really love outdoor. And I'm kind of an endurance guy. I, I like this challenge of delivering over consecutive days. So this is definitely a benefit I got. And sport, adventures, those challenges, they always set a, a certain milestone in my life where I can prepare for and they give me so much energy. They give me way more energy than a party trip or Netflix night or 24 hours Star Wars watching. Even though I love all of this and I will do it, obviously, this is something that really, really motivates me. Find an adventure on the world, something absolute. Cities, places, mountains, you pass. This is just... Be respectful with your nature and beat the nature and fight with the nature in a very sportive sense, of course. Second thing, the thrill of the challenge. This is how I would like to summarize it. I like challenges. I get motivated when something is difficult. I get motivated when people, people tell me, that's not possible, you can't do this. Maybe I have a simple mind here but I can be easily manipulated so I can tell you this already if you want to manipulate me say oh it's really tough to do this hike it's really tough to do this cycling tour and I say, okay I'm interested now tell me this is a problem but as well I guess a bless two other topics on my note that lead into the thrill of the challenge is question one Bernie do you have the guts whoever your name is Do you have the guts to pull something off like this? Secondly, the thought that I wanted to share is I watch documentaries like I guess everyone else and adventurous documentaries where people are doing trips, road trips, whatever, hikes. I really, I really love. What I usually feel is when I watch those things, it's like why I am watching this. I want to do those things. I don't want to be comfortable in my couch and be a spectator. I want to be the protagonist. I want to be the one who's doing the stuff. So this feeling always kind of drives me and says, hey, are you, are you really getting the best out of it? That's the thrill of the challenge. Another point that motivates me and I try to pin down is the experience I had in the past. At one point after my university degree, I decided with a fellow university friend to cycle to Barcelona from Innsbruck. It was not so well thought through. It was not so well planned. It was basically, we did our exam, we graduated, we needed to do something before we both started our job. And so we decided to jump on the bikes, full stop. It helped because it just broke the ice. Positively, I can just summarize it as an awesome experience. Seven, eight, nine days, I don't remember, on the bike, going from Austria to Italy, from Italy to France and from France to Spain, passing Monaco, just great experience, a complete change of life. It was absolutely amazing. It was painful, it was tough, but I've been doing it with another friend. As I said, I guess this helped. But in general, this positive experience was for me just a no-brainer that it will happen again. So it will be just positive. And here on, on a reflective note, one very significant event was at the first time when I was standing with the bike, starting from Innsbruck at the ocean, it was in Genoa, it was just amazing. Four or five days on the bike, you passed the Stelvio, this wonderful mountain range, And three days later, you are with your bike at the ocean. Full stop. Amazing what the human body is capable. Another point I noted down for myself around the why was be aware of how biased we all are. And maybe here the question is, or the topic is, why people do not do such trips more often. I feel that social media, our life, newspapers, all the influencers, they kind of want us to make more or less, you know, vacation, we go to the Maldives, we go to 
wherever place, have a full board, enjoy life, take easy, watch TV, barbecue, etc. And there is nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. For me, I feel let's cut out for a while all the social media, all these external factors and take a breath, sit down and think and feel and take the time to plan such a trip. Intrinsic motivation Take the time to explore your intrinsic motivation, who you are and what you do. This allows you to make your own plans and considering your family, your life situation, your job, but it's really you and not external factors that just influence you. What is the message here? There is no, I cannot do this. There is no, I cannot do this. This is why I repeat this. There ain't no cans. This is a very famous quote from Rocky. Mickey tells this Rocky when he is nervous about changing from a right-handed to a left-handed fighter or left-handed to right-handed when he fights Apollo. And now our world or our terms, impossible is nothing. You can do anything you want. Dream big and go after your dreams whatever they are. In many cases, especially for us who are privileged or born and raised in Europe with okay family situation, with okay wealth, this is usually the case. Get out of your standard habits, get out of your comfort zone if you feel something is missing in your life. Be creative in what you want, be creative in your life. Key message here, you can do anything you want. These thoughts mainly have influenced me and thus I decided to do another long cycling trip and this is why I was sitting on the bike and cycling to Athens. This was the main topic of the day. If you have any questions, if you have comments, if you agree, if you disagree, please contact me via cyclingathens at gmail.com. Next session, here is the outlook. We are talking about day two of the cycling trip. We are cycling together. I'll take you basically virtually on my bike and we are cycling from Graz in Austria, sorry, via Slovenia to the wonderful city of Zagreb in Croatia, the capital of Croatia. We are basically passing Slovenia through Maribor. We are just going through and we will talk about how did I come up with the tour and how did I plan and approached it. So basically, why this tour? Why Graz, Zagreb, etc.? And how did I plan the daily trips, the, 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 whole, the whole setup? I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. I'm still Bernie Schuster. Talk to you soon. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Appreciate life. Smile and have a great day. Quote of the day. This is how I want to finish. Your mind can be your strongest weapon or your greatest weakness. Bernie Schuster, Cycling Athens, over and out. Mm -hmm.